Hey peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous and in today's video, we're going to attempt a shaded embroidery design. So let's get to it. So we haven't really shaded any embroidery designs before, so this is really just kind of a try to see what we can come up with. And we're just going to be using like an emoji because they are more like a simpler design, but they do have a lot of shading that we can work with. Yeah, kind of cartoony, but mm -hmm. also some realistic shading that's involved. And we don't have that many thread colors, but we're going to yeah. attempt to do a really simple shade on an emoji. So we know there are more complicated ways in granulating your thread colors so that it kind of blends between two. But we're going to try to more simplistically mm -hmm. uh, do this by doing some param settings. And do like the layers on layers, just to try to make something more easy to do, to sh still get some shaded results. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the screenshot of the emoji we're gonna use. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna hit the control key while I shrink this down so it stays the way it's supposed to be. Instead of tracing, because this is gonna be a nightmare in uh, tracing bitmap because it, there are so many shades of colors here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to simplify this by tracing it out myself. Okay, and I got the opacity turned on so I can see. So, okay, let me just... I'm going to use some just arbitrary colors here because it really doesn't matter until we go to the machine and we put in the, um, the right color. So, for this color here, it's just going to be like the basic um, fill that I'm going to have in the overall circle. So I'm just going to click that guy there. And then I'm going to duplicate it, Command D. And for this one, I'm going to get rid of the fill and I'm going to add a stroke. And for this one, I'm going to do a darker stroke. Hold Shift and go to Fill and Stroke tab. And I'm going to reduce this a bit. That should be good there. Yeah, and what this is going to be is it going to represent kind of this darker area around the circle here. Yeah. I do have snap nodes on right now, so everything kind of goes in place. And then um, kind of what we have to do, we should probably organize our layers a bit. Um, so I'm going to add a layer here and this one I call background fill. And I'll add another one. Stroke. This is just to stay organized? Yeah, this is really just so that I can hide things, so it, it kind of gets out of my way, if that makes sense. Um, so I have another one. And that way I can start adding or moving things into different layers. So now what we're going to try to do is kind of recreate some of the shading lines here. So obviously we don't have a bunch of different yellows to make this look really good. Um, yeah, I think thread colors are actually kind of vital for this type of project, which we have like maybe four yellows and not all of them will be good for this part. So right. thread colors are kind of a big deal for shading. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our background fill here and we're gonna use this shape. So I can command C and I'm going Command B over here. I would use Command D for duplicate, but um, I'm afraid I'll select the wrong thing. Sometimes it's just easier for me to move it off to the side. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of like add kind of a, a little stroke line down here so that I can make this bit darker. So I'm going to use my Bezier tool. Like that. And then I'm going to go into the nodes. I gotta shrink this down quite a bit. And I'm just going here. So that this can be a darker colored thread. Probably the same color as my stroke around the outside. The first thing I need to do is cut the shape out because I don't need this bit up here anymore. Select everything. And then path, exclusion, and then I'm going to nodes and I'm just going to delete these segments just like that. So now I have kind of the bottom shaded part of the smiley face. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this a darker color. Again, right now the colors don't matter as long as the machine recognizes they're different colors. 
kind of looks like a beard. Kind of, the way it is right now, huh? This is kind of a sharp line here. Kind of want to fix that. So the next part is making, I guess, a lighter color up top. So again, I'm going to select my background fill. I'm going to Command C and Command V. And for this one, I'm going to pretty much do the same thing. Use my Fezia tool. And I just want to make a little bit of lighter yellow on the top. You can see it kind of filled in here. I'm going to go ahead and remove that fill. And then go into my nodes and just make it a little bit of a curve. So now I'm going to select everything here. And let's go to path and division. There we go. Because we just want this part here. And this is going to be lighter, so I'm going to just turn this yellow. And just like that. That kind of looks a little weird, doesn't it? We are hoping that this blends a little bit better uh, with our thread. And we're going to do some things um, in our params to make this a little bit of a thinner stitch than our overall base here. I think maybe we could like get rid of the underlay and increase the space between the stitches. Yeah, and absolutely. That could give a cool look. Yeah, I think you're right. You get rid of this, you can see it's going to be kind of... All right, well, we'll go with this for now and we'll keep going. So turn my image back on. And right now we're just going to trace out the sunglasses real quick. Should be pretty easy, not too many nodes. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to turn this snapping thing off. Doesn't look like much now, but I'm going to fill that and then get rid of the stroke, hitting shift and this red X. And now go into the nodes tool and I'm just going to shape this out. You can see how helpful turning the opacity down on this. And to do that, go to fill and you can turn the opacity up and down. Do it here. Oh yeah, right there as well. And that will make it so that you can see the layer underneath it. So we have ours down quite a bit. And you may be asking, how did I know where to put these little nodes when I was tracing this out? And the answer is I really try to keep it so that there's a simple curve in between the individual nodes. So like right here, there's one curve. Whereas if I put one like right here and then one down here, you can see that there's a curve in and a curve out. And that would not look nice when uh, trying to adjust this. So for every curve in the design, I'll drop a little node there. So I'm gonna use my Bezier tool again. And I'll go ahead and start here at the bottom of this highlight. All right, so the next thing I wanna do, there's some highlights here on the bottom, right here of the glasses, and then one on the top. I hide this layer, you can see it better. See there's a highlight here, and then highlights underneath. And we can simulate that with a bean stitch. So that's what we're gonna do. Go ahead and just draw a simple line here. Going to put this as a gray stroke by hitting shift gray, and then removing the fill by hitting this red X. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side on the top. All right, so now we'll go ahead and do the mouth. Same deal, I just want to make sure I put one curve in between nodes. And I think there's one tiny more detail that I want to get, and that's kind of the highlight of this bottom lip here. And I think we'll do the same thing where we just add a um, a dashed line so we can add a bean stitch and we can do some light yellow right there on the, on the bottom. What do you think? Okay. Just like that. And this is going to be a stroke, so shift yellow and no fill. Just like that. So what I'm going to do, and again this looks really really wonky. Can um, we go into the simulator to see like what it would look Well again, like? the simulator is not going to show exactly what it will look like because the colors are really off. Oh yeah. 
yeah. we can adjust some of the colors here. So why don't we do that? But you can see it's still not going to show because we're going to do some blending techniques here. So yeah, let's go ahead and do some adjustments here of what we want to do. So we want this background circle to stay fully filled, normal kind of params that we normally do. So stitch params. So our normal setting, 0.25 millimeter, normal background um, or underlay. So it's just going to do a, just a bright yellow circle at first. So that's good. But for these two, for our shading, we hit shift to select multiple. What we're gonna do is adjust that. So back into params for those two. And we're going to reduce the number of stitching. So between rows, we're gonna turn that to 0.5. I think just having less stitches will make it blend more. Yeah, possibly. that's that's the hope at least. So we'll go to our underlay and we're gonna remove the underlay. And this is really just an experiment to see yeah. what we can do without going <clears throat> through extreme lengths to get shading. Right. All right, so we'll go there, we'll hit apply and quit, and that will hopefully give us the shading that we're looking for. Uh, do you think we should change the degree of angles? Mm, possibly. It turned it 90 degrees, Let's see what that looks like. Well, you can try it. What do you think? Um, we can try it. Okay. We're honestly not sure what our results are going to look like here, but we'll go ahead and apply and quit for that. Um, oh, one more thing I forgot, because this is a layer, our black is a layer, and then our gray. What I actually want to do is I kind of want to ex um, exclude the black underneath these highlights so that we minimize the number of layers that we have. Um, I'm fine with leaving the yellow underneath it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that and I'm going to hit shift. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit this and this and I'm going to command C and command B and then I'm going to select that, shift, glasses, and I'm going to exclude it. It basically pokes a hole into the, the black. Otherwise, you can see here, the black is going to be back there. And then I can just move these back. My snapping tool on. Boom. Just like that. So we minimize the number of layers. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to make our highlights um, bean stitches. Oh, I have to make them a dashed line first. Go and stroke, stroke style and turn those into dashed lines. Now I can turn it into a bead stitch. Line quit. All right. So now we go back to our layers. All right, this is really going to be the same color as this, um, but I'm just gonna leave it a different color. It doesn't really matter right now, like I said. What matters is what you feed into the machine, but what we can do is Look at this now, we can avoid that. And I'm going to turn off our image and let's take a look at this. Okay, so we have some order issues that we need to solve. So we're gonna have to restack our objects so that it does it in the right order. Now that we have it all selected in the order that we want to embroider, go here. Okay. Okay, so the colors are all off, but I don't know. I, I don't know about this might should go a different angle. This here? Yeah, yeah I think we should just go back to a regular zero mm -hmm. degree angle. So easy enough. That shift, hold that, and we'll go back to zero degrees. Plank quit. Okay, I think that's where we're gonna go with. 
Are you ready to embroider this out? See what um, we get? I'm nervous to see our results, but I hope it turns out decent. Um, I think it really does come down to colors too, so. Yeah, again, shading is not something we've ever tried to do before. Yeah. And we're just trying to get these param settings right so that we can try to blend as much as possible. Let's go ahead and save this. So here are the yellows we have. These are just from one big pack of threads, so we're kind of limited on the color options we have, and you can see these are kind of not super similar. I mean, on camera they look kind of similar, but I don't know what the results will be since they're kind of all over the place. Yeah, we're just gonna try our luck and mm -hmm. see if we can get some decent results out of this. If not, it's a lesson learned for, for all of you and, and for us. better than I was expecting since you can kind of tell like it's shaded there's more dimension to it than if you just did yellow and then like a smiley face. Yeah and now that we know what our param settings should be for this type of shading we could go back into our design and add a little bit more detail to that shading kind of underneath the sunglasses like the real emoji picture mm -hmm. is but make it more complicated. Yeah. I think we found actually a pretty easy way to shade like there isn't that much extra work that you have to do. You just kind of have to make a new layer, do some things in prams, and then you have it. Yeah, it definitely is trial and error. This is our third emoji that we've embroidered just to try to test out these settings. Um, this one obviously is the best results we got. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications to get my every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.